Let me wait until the recording is officially started. Welcome to um, Improving PDF Accessibility for Fixer Content Day 2023. Um, I'm Amanda Smothers. I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. Um, and you can contact me anytime if you have any accessibility issues or questions or um, want to know how to um, work on with Ally. Um, I've delivered the um, accessibility with Ally workshop before, as well as um, the accessible syllabus workshop, usually um, at the beginning of the semester, so in August and in January. Um, and if you want either of those recordings um, or if you want to attend those, you can contact me as well. So let's talk about why accessibility matters, first of all, um, particularly with PDFs. Uh, accessible PDFs benefit all students in a universal design perspective. And PDFs that have been or are accessible are easier to navigate. They're searchable. They can be accessed by text to speech or screen reader software. And by creating accessible course doc content, students using assistive technologies like Kurzweil or JAWS can listen to their course readings. And I'm just going to turn off my camera so that that's not distracting. So what's the problem with scanned PDFs? Usually um, when a PDF is flagged in Blackboard Ally, um, one of the, the main cul culprits is a scanned PDF. So basically scanned PDFs are images of the document. So they're not able to be read by a screen reader. And also depending on the quality of the scan, it might not even be visually readable for our um, sighted students. Unfortunately, PDFs are completely inaccessible if they're just scanned images. So to make an image based PDF accessible, you'll need to convert the text using optical character recognition or OCR software. Um, Anthology allies alternative formats do that for us um, to a degree, but um, they're not the last or or the best option. We can also use Adobe Acrobat Pro. I'll show you a little bit of that today and how you use their accessibility tools if you're looking at um, making your PDFs more accessible. Um, we have access to Adobe Acrobat Pro for campus computers here at NIU. So if you don't have that installed on your campus computer, um, you can contact the Department of IT um, and have that them install that um, for you if you have um, the use for that. So we saw um, Mike showed us in our last session the Anthology Ally Instructor feedback. So this is just a screenshot of that and I'll show you that um, in more detail in just a second. But when you're looking at PDFs, usually if it's a scan document, you're gonna get a really low score like this one has 5%. Um, and let me show, I'm going to sh stop sharing this and then share um, my actual screen. So that I can show you um, this in real time. All right, so we can see here um, I've got this PDF file. We've got the gauge over here. The accessibility score is low. So we want to select that. So it tells us that the PDF is untagged. Um, we can look at, and, and Mike showed us how to look at what that means. Um, so an untagged file means that it doesn't have labels that clarify the structure of the document. So it makes it less um, accessible to students who are using screen reading technology um, because they cannot um, navigate through the document easily. So they can't find information um, and skip through the document as easily. Um, so we've got some instructions for how to tag a PDF here. It's not great instructions. Basically, it says find the original source that's already editable. Um, if we don't have that, um, can we provide a bibliographic reference? So is there an accessible version of this someplace else? Can we, you know, do that via URL or the title um, so that we can find the original file's location. Not ideal. We want to give our students um, the information as equitably as possible. And so if they're having to 
go outside of the actual document to find an accessible version of it, that's not as, as great as making the document accessible. Um, and it says right now it's not possible to create a tagged PDF for this file. The issue will show in your reports and affect the accessibility score. Um, so if we click out of that, um, we can upload a tagged PDF version down here. So I have this opened up um, here, and this is Adobe Acrobat Pro. Um, so I just want to show you, you know, that we can edit this here. Um, but if we also go back here and exit, exit out of this. If I can get back to it. Um, we can also download alternative formats of this document. So we can um, download HTML, EPUB, Braille, audio version, Beeline Reader, and Immersive Reader, um, which is new. Um, so that helps with comprehension and grammar skills. It's great. Um, and our students have access to all of these formats. Um, but whether they're accurate or not for a PDF, um, you might want to check on that. Um, so it will, they will convert it to these and make it readable um, for students using assistive, assistive technology, for example, if they're using, um, you know, JAWS or, or something like that, and they use the HTML version. Um, but we want to make sure that it's access, the original document is accessible as well. I'll go back there. So within Acrobat Pro, we have access to an accessibility checker tool. Um, and if it doesn't show up in your tools on the left hand side, you just go to more tools or you can go to this tools tab here um, and scroll down and find it and um, add the shortcut there. So it'll say add if it's not there. Um, if it is there, you can open it there. There's also an action wizard that you can use. Um, I won't go over the action wizard today, but I will go over the accessibility tool. So within the accessibility tool, we can uh, auto tag the document. We can um, do an accessibility check. We can um, look at an accessibility report. We can set alternative text for um, figures and, and images. Um, we can do and you know, use the setup assistant too. Um, and then reading order is where we can set our tags or edit our tags too um, and the types of information that's included here. So if we do our accessibility check um, and we do it for all the pages in the document, we start checking it. It'll tell us right here what the issues are in this document. So we've got six issues. We've got tagged PDF failed. So this is a, not a tagged PDF. It's the primary language of the document is not set either. There's no title um, and that's within the tags. Um, there's no bookmarks. Um, alternative text, we have some issues too, and you can click on these issues um, to find more information on them. Um, so once you've addressed issues, you can then um, check again from the report. So let's say we want to add the primary language for the document. So we would do that under, just did this yesterday, properties. And under reading options, language, English for this document, but you, you know, if you're teaching in a foreign language um, or world language, um, it might be a different language. So we're going to set the language for the document. So primary language is passed now. Um, now we've got pet tagged PDF failed, so we can auto tag this document. And auto tag isn't, you know, foolproof. The best way to make a document um, accessible is to start with an accessible format, an editable format for your document. Not always possible, particularly like for this example, this is um, an article from one of our library databases. 
Um, so we do the best with what we've got. Um, so we've got uh, our auto tags done here. Um, we can do another accessibility check. So now it's it's tagged. Um, so if we look at reading order, we can see the order that this is in. We can click on things. I can make this um, into a heading, for example. Um, and then I can maybe make, oops, I can make this into a heading. Sometimes this works. There we go. Oop, didn't mean to make that heading four. Heading two. Um, so you can do headings and tag things in that way too. Um, so if we actually go to, let's see if we need any alternative text here. There's no information. Um, so this one is is good. Um, color contrast. It says that we need to manually check that. We can scroll through. It's black text on white background, so it should be fine um, with the color contrast there. Um, alternative text there, the it passed that for figures and alternative text and nested. Um, there's an issue with tables. So headers, we failed on headers for the tables. So those are things that we're going to need to go through and fix. Um, but let's see what what it says when we upload this. And then one other thing I forgot to mention that you can do to check accessibility um, is to use the read aloud mode or the read mode, read aloud, here we go. So activate read aloud. Um, and then it will read it out loud to us and we can kind of see um, what, whether it's reading it correctly. Let me deactivate that. All right, so if we browse and we upload this tagged version, taking a hot second here. Hopefully I'm not having issues now. <laughs> My cat issues in the last one. OK, so now we're at 84%. Um, and this is flagging some of the things that are already flagged in this accessibility checker in Pro 2. So we've got tables that are missing headers. Um, you know, we don't have a title set for the PDF. And some things, you know, are pretty complicated to, to address. Um, there's some text. It says there's some text with insufficient contrast, so we can see where that is. OK, so we've got this down here, location. That's got insufficient contrast. Without an editable version of this, we can't really fix that. Um, the headings don't begin at level one, so we need to, to change that. So we've got heading two down here instead of heading one, so we would need to fix that. Um, and then the headings don't follow a logical structure. Um, so we've got, you know, a heading structure that's that's not in order. Um, so we've got two before one, heading two before heading one, um, which we don't want to have for our heading levels. So those are things that we can change um, change in the the Adobe Acrobat Pro, some of these things we can't. So that contrast issue is one of those things. Um, the tables that are missing headers. Um, so we, but we, we've made a lot of progress on this. And I think that's, you know, definitely the, the goal here is to make that progress. So we're up to 84% accessible according to Ally now. Um, so this is in the green versus in the red, and we can probably move on to you know, getting other PDF files in the green for us as well. Um, and I'm going to
stop sharing that for now and let me share my PowerPoint again. All right, so just uh, some terminology here, OCR and tagging for PDFs. OCR stands for optical character recognition. As I mentioned before, when a PDF is scanned, it takes a picture of the document. So that means that it's just one big image. It doesn't ha actually have any text that can be understood by a screen reader. So it's completely inaccessible to someone who has low or no vision or who uses a screen reader for other reasons. So we have some students who use screen readers um, who don't have you know, low or no vision, they're using it for, for example, a learning disability. Or maybe they're English language learners and they're using it for comprehension. Um, it also makes it less useful for all students because the text isn't searchable uh, or useful for a student who might want to, for example, highlight passages um, or copy quotations for their notes. A scanned PDF, um, just in sum, is just a giant graphic. It's not searchable. It's not editable. It's not usable by screen readers because there's no text. It's just an image. So a PDF that's OCR'd is text-based. It's searchable. It's editable. It's usable by screen readers. Um, OCRing, as I mentioned, isn't isn't the last step in making the document accessible. Um, depending on the quality of the scan, the OCR might not be able to read and convert all of the text in the document. So you'll want to check the document's accessibility yourself, and you can do that by running it through this, a screen reader if you have access to a screen reader. Um, there's some free programs out there, free screen reader programs or in software out there, or there's paid ones that are um, better, but more expensive, obviously. Um, or you can use the read aloud feature in Acrobat. Uh, another important component of making a document accessible is adding tags to the documents. Um, as I just showed you, documents should be tagged so it's easy for a screen reader to navigate through that document. Um, you can do that in a few different ways, as I showed you um, using um, Acrobat. Uh, you can also create your Word document. So if you're creating the document yourself and you want it, want to upload it as a PDF, I don't recommend that. I just recommend editing or uploading the editable document. But if you really want to use PDF, um, you can create your Word document or your PowerPoint using, using styles and headings and following all of the other accessibility recommendations for you know, adding alt text to images, um, you know, making sure that if there's any video content or audio content on there that that's captioned, um, and then convert the document to a PDF using the save as option. Um, if you don't have the original document and cannot find an accessible version, then you can still make sure that it's OCR'd, making it somewhat readable, um, and, and make sure that it's tagged. Most scanners, so if you're scanning a document, most scanners have an OCR option in their settings. Not perfect, but it'll make the accessibility better. Um, as I showed you, you could use Acrobat Pro, or you can use the alternative um, formats in Ally to create ver more accessible versions of the document. Um, yes, Kimberly. In your experience, so if I look anywhere print scanners, um, I guess in comparison to the examples that you're giving about conversion, what I guess the probability, the likelihood, utility. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that? You were kind of um, cutting out at the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just, so I have some uh, like physical books that I've scanned a couple pages out of mm -hmm. um, on you like using our Anywhere print scanner. So I guess I'm just wondering what the examples that you're giving now, like sort of, I guess what's the probability of like those becoming accessible or is that type of, I guess, like with it or whatever from scanning from a physical book? Yeah, so scanning from a physical book, um, you might be able to find, you know, an ebook version of that that might be accessible um, that you can excerpt from. Um, if not, and you're scanning that, making sure that the scan is of good quality so that it can be OCR'd and tagged accurately is important. Um, so making sure that there's 
sufficient contrast between the text and the background, for example. So I've I've been guilty of this too, of scanning things, you know, using my phone. And you know, some of the stuff towards the crease of the page is a little bit warped. And so maybe that doesn't get picked up um, well by the OCR um, or the tagging, uh, the auto tagging. Um, so just I would I would recommend if that's the only option is to scan that that book um, is to make sure that the scan is of good quality so that then it can be made accessible after that. I hope that answers your question. Great. Um, so depending on the document, you know, making a PDF accessible can be a painstaking process, um, but it's an important process and we have the tools available to us to make our documents more accessible, particularly with, with Acrobat Pro and with the Allies um, alternative formats. Um, in the end, remediating a PDF file takes a lot more time than creating an accessible Word file or PowerPoint and then saving it as a PDF. Um, but sometimes, as Kimberly mentioned, we don't have that option. So if it's not our own file that we're creating, we're using somebody else's content, um, then it may be you know, a necessary evil to have that as a scanned PDF that we upload. But we can still make that accessible for our students. Um, one note, if you are creating a Word file yourself or a PowerPoint um, and you want to convert it into a PDF, make sure that you use the Save As um, PDF and not Print As PDF. If you use Print As PDF, that's going to take away all of the style headings in the PDF um, and it's going to make that document less accessible. So just a few features, accessibility features of note in Adobe Acrobat Pro. We've got that accessibility checker, which I showed you, and the ability to set language. Um, there's also an option to OCR your document, um, which you can do from the, the right-hand menu as well. Um, there's a scan and OCR feature in Adobe Pro. Um, so that's what I was talking about, where you know some scanners can uh, OCR the document for you as they scan it. Um, uh, or so you can use that in Adobe Pro or yeah, Adobe Acrobat Pro, or you can use the scan and OCR for uh, a document that you've already scanned. Um, so you, it doesn't only work for new documents that you're scanning in the moment. Um, also, I showed you how to auto tag your document and to edit some of those tags. Um, so these are all of the things that you'll kind of want to have in your toolkit. Um, but really, that accessibility checker is going to help you with looking at the components of your document that need um, more accessibility. And then also helping you do that by helping you do the auto tag, um, rechecking that, um, identifying any form fields. So if you want, you know, an editable or a fillable PDF form, it can help you with that too. Um, it can help you set alternative text for images within the PDF. Um, so definitely a, a good first step is using that accessibility checker in Adobe Acrobat Pro. Um, so one other piece that I wanted to um, to bring up was that it isn't just screen reader accessibility that's important with our PDF documents. The visual readability of our documents is also important for all of our sighted students. So insufficient contrast between the text and the background because of a poor scan, for example, can impede students' ability to read the document. Um, blurred or faded text could be difficult for students to see or to maintain focus on. If students are struggling to make out the words on a the page, then they're not absorbing the meaning of those words as they read. So it's really important to have visual accessibility as well as um, our accessibility for our students who have low or no vision. Um, one other resource that I wanted to highlight is the NIU Disability Resource Center. They're in the Peters Campus Life Building in Suite 108. 
And they're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And I've got their contact information there on the screen for you. Um, they can also help you with accessibility of your documents. If you do want them to make some of your documents accessible, um, particularly if you have students with accommodations for your class who need um, accessible documents, um, and that's one of their accommodations, they will definitely work with you to create accessible documents for you, um, including PDF files to make your PDF files accessible. Um, they do need some lead time though. So right as the semester starting or the week before the semester starting, probably not the best time to get their, their help with that because they're going to be inundated with, um, with requests for accessibility um, services. So definitely contact them if you need some help, additional help with accessibility and, and making documents accessible um, or captioning videos that you use in your class um, that you've created um, or editing your captions. Um, so they can help you out with that uh, if you know they have the time and they're not inundated with requests. So definitely take advantage of, of that. And they can also check you know, you can send them a document, they can check to make sure that it's accessible too. All right, so just a little note on participating in Fix Your Content Day. Um, the In order for your, your stuff, and this isn't the most important thing, but in order for um, your fixes to count for Fix Your Content Day, it needs to be upload, uploaded through the Ally Instructor Feedback Tool. Um, so you wanna check those Ally Accessibility Gauges and the Instructor Feedback make those fixes, upload the documents back through that instructor feedback tool. And that gives us information too. So just outside of Fix Your Content Day, if you're uploading um, those files through the instructor feedback tool, then we can see that you've made those fixes. Um, and that'll come into play too if you wanna get our ally, our accessibility badges um, through the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. So we can give you you know a badge that shows that you've you know made a bunch of fixes to your content to make it more accessible um and you can share that on you know your social media or in blackboard um so definitely go through the ally instructor feedback tool and as mike mentioned in our last session that also prevents multiple files from being sort of in the background of your course um because when you delete a file from Blackboard, it doesn't disappear from your course. It's in the background. Um, so you don't see it in the course content area, but it's still there taking up space. Um, and we get, you know, requests every semester from faculty who don't realize that they have a ton of old files still in the background of their course taking up data um, and their quota. And, you know, they can't, all of a sudden they fill their quota of two gigs for the course and they can't add any other assignments or any other content to their course. So this is one way to kind of prevent some of that from happening is using the Ally Instructor Feedback Tool if you're gonna upload um, a revised version of your document. Um, and Blackboard or Anthology, I should say, they're called Anthology now. So, you know, we'll kind of use those terms interchangeably, but eventually we'll, we'll remember to start calling it Anthology um, completely. Um, but Anthology is also working on um, improving, and I'm not sure what the timeline is this for this is, but improving um, the ability to see the files, the content collection of your course, the files that are in the background, and and to delete those files or or you know clear up some of that space. So they're working on making that a little bit more user friendly too. Um, also, we've got our office hours this afternoon. So, you know, if you want some one on one help with accessibility, um, you can visit our office hours. We'll have people there from 1 to 4 p.m., both online in Teams and face to face in our Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning building, which is right between the parking structure and the library. Um, so, it'll be an AC 100B, which, if you come into our front doors from um, West Locust Street, you're gonna keep to the left and you'll you'll come into our building um, and the room will be be in the part of the building to the left when you come in the front door. 
Um, so definitely stop by, even if you just have a quick question or if you want us to walk you through anything, you can screen share if you're on Teams and we can kind of walk you through how to fix specific issues or how to find the accessibility report in your course um, or work you through making a document more accessible. All right, so now I can open it up for any questions that you have for me or for you know any of our team who's here who wants to chime in too. <laughs> Oops, went backwards. Any questions? We have like a ton of time left. I know I kind of sped through that, but I can also show you anything else that you need to, to see. I will show you just briefly while I'm waiting. Oh, Kimberly, yes. Uh, two quick questions. One, which is trying to say in my brain. Uh, so the first one was the anthology of anthology and Blackboard merge. Is the word Blackboard disappearing eventually, or what was it that you said anthology of life? Um, anthology is just the name of the organization now, so it's going to be anthology. Um, anthology owns Ally now, so it's Anthology Ally instead of Blackboard Ally. Um, but the the platform is still called Blackboard for now. Thank you. I wanted to confirm that uh, just for my knowledge. And then what was the other thing that you said that I forgot? I don't remember right now. I'm going to hope it comes back. I'll let you know. OK, sounds good. All right, so I will show you where the OCR, the scan and OCR um, feature is in. So if you are looking at the document and you don't have anything, any tools open, um, it's scan and OCR right here. So you can click on that. Um, you can have it recognize uh, text. You can have it enhance the scanned image. So if we go to um, recognize text in this file, uh, make sure that you're setting the language, all pages, and then we click on that. Oh, okay, so it couldn't perform the, the recognition because it does contain renderable text. So let me see, I have another file. Okay, Stop. I have another file that I can show you though. Just stop sharing for a second so I can find that file. You don't have to see all of the files that are in. Oops. And now, of course, I'm not finding the file that I need. Um, contact do it for uh, access to that. Um, and I'll double check on that, that they're the ones that you want to contact, um, usually with the. Uh, with software, they're the ones. To contact for that, um, especially if it's something like Adobe um, Acrobat Pro, where we have an institutional license, they'll have to download that so that they can have they can give you the institutional license rather than you downloading it and just having your. Um, your personal free trial version of it. No problem. All right, so I have a document here that I can share with you. OK, so fun title, the trash with which the press now groans. Um, so we can enhance this scanned document. Um, 
and that will recognize the text from the document. And it's you can see the gauge here, it's optimizing the scan document there at the bottom. So it'll take a minute or so for this to work. And you know, depending on how long the document is, it could take a it could take a few minutes um, for it to recognize the text in the document in the scan document and enhance that. So we're almost to the end here. And some things that you might want to watch out for with scan documents too is it'll, so these pages, the edges of pages, it'll tag those or it'll flag those as un, um, uh, as image images without alt text. Um, so beware of that. So that's another thing with, you know, the quality of your scan. You know, you could edit the page and, and crop those out if you needed to. Um, but just be aware that, you know, all of those like little little marks on the page where you can see the edges of the pages, those might come in this here that's going to come in as an image that's going to get flagged in our accessibility checker. Um, So this is going to recognize text, is going to convert our scan page to editable text and images. These are just little things that we can do with, with these tools um, that are going to make our documents more accessible. They're not going to make them perfect, but they are going to make them better which is the goal. Perfection is not our goal, improvement is. Everything would be great if it was perfect, but we don't want perfection to be the enemy of progress. All right, so if we close that um, and we save that, uh, let's go to our accessibility checker and we'll check this document. And we got some issues here. So we're not tagged, so let's um, auto tag our document. Great. And this should be more accessible. And then I'll go over to my course here and we'll see how accessible. This document is. So just waiting on it to become assessed here. <clears throat> okay, so we've improved it. It's medium. So we'll look at what our issues are here. Images that are missing a description. So this is the thing that I wanted to show you. There are no actual images in this file. The images that are missing a description are these page edges. So if we delete or if we crop these pages and, or remove those, those uh there's another one. We've redacted something down here. So that's showing us that our image is missing a description. Um, so we've got those two issues in here. So not all of them are showing up as images without a description, but some of them are. Um, so what we would need to do is then we would we would want to fix that. We would either want to remove that um, or we can add you know, we can add a description, but that would be distracting for our students like to all of a sudden in the middle of reading something, get a description of, you know, the edge of a page. Um, so that's that's the main issue within this. Um, so if we can fix that issue, we could increase the score. 
Um, the PDF also doesn't have a title and there's some text with insufficient contrast. Um, and if we look through that, you know, it looks like those are just flaws. Most of them look to be just flaws in the in the tagging or the OCRing. Um, so we can go through and and work on those in Adobe Pro. Right. All right, so any other questions? And I see you typing, Cindy. Kimberly, did you remember your question? I did. Um, in the previous <laughs> session, I had asked about the organization uh, that says we have to change the staff settings within the organization and then order to see the ally report feature. And I settings where? Um, so if the if you're if it's enabled for the organization, then it'll be under the um, books and tools menu. Um, if not, then you'll just need to contact do it Department of IT um, and they can um, enable that for the organization. If it's an ultra organization, if it's an original organization, you can enable that tool yourself. Um, but if it's an ultra organization, then that's something that you'll want to contact do it to enable for the organization. Oop, I mean to do that. Hi, it's Cindy. I just wanted to say Hi, Cindy. that um, I've done I'm part of do it and I'm part of HR. Awesome. So um, I did a PDF training for HR and this is the little verbiage that I put in there is what we put on all the top of our PDF documents for that particular training and available for campus. So mm -hmm. that kind of gives the instructions of if you've got admin rights, you can go there. If you don't, you just create a ticket. OK, great. Thanks so much, Cindy. Yeah, and You're I know welcome. we um, in CIDL, we used to have admin rights in our laptops, but then we switched over to, you know, do it controlling our laptops. So we have to go through do it now. We used to be able to download those, those things ourselves. But yeah, so depending on your your um, device, um, you'll you can either do that yourself or do that via a service desk ticket. Thank you so much, Cindy. You're welcome. Hi, this is Mike Taylor. Um, Kimberly, Hi, Mike. If, Kimberly, if you share your organization name with me in the chat, I can check to see if Ally is in there for you, um, if you want me to do that, because I, I can check, check that for you. Otherwise, um, yeah, you can talk uh, check it check it with do it but I can definitely check it for you if you've I just need to know the name of the organization thank you Mike any other questions or or comments My dogs wanted to get it on the action. I don't know if you heard them barking just now. All right, well, thank you for joining today. And like I mentioned before, we have our office hours this afternoon. So I will share uh, the link to the team session for that in our chat. Um, great, thanks for sharing that with Mike Kimberly and he will get that um, information for you. Um, so 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, is when our office hours are for Ally and for accessibility this afternoon. So you can get help on specific accessibility issues from one of our team members. Um, it's going to be online in Teams and the link is in the chat. Uh, or if you prefer to get face-to-face -face assistance, you can do that too. We'll be in uh, our building in room 100B this afternoon from one to four. So there will always be at least a couple of people um, in the room or on Teams to help out with that from one to 4 p.m. this afternoon. Um, so thanks everybody for, for joining. And if you have any questions after this workshop today, I'll stick around for a bit until everybody's out of the workshop, just in case you, know, you wanted to ask a, another quick question or something popped up. But um, thanks and 
uh, thank you all for registering for our Fix Your Content Day, our second annual Fix Your Content Day participation this year. Um, and you can check our um, kind of competition standings on the website um, or, you know, just go through and, and make as many things accessible as you can today. Um, and we'll be standing by if you have any questions. But thanks, everybody.